Okay. Now let's talk about buckling. Buckling is a very interesting phenomenon because a structure that's buckled has lost its ability to carry load even though the material itself may not have failed. The material may still be elastic. As an example, I've got two different sticks here. They were cut from the same board, so they've got the same length and the same cross-sectional area, but different cross-sections. This one is wide and, and low, it's like a ruler. This one is square. So let's, let's look at this one first. This is kind of like a ruler. Uh, if you want the dimensions here, I've got them written on the back. Its base, if you want to look at the, the width there, is 27 millimeters. Its height is 4 millimeters. It's 557 millimeters long. All right? And I calculated the buckling load to be about 5.67 pounds or about 25.2 newtons. So you can see here, if I take and push this, it's very easy to get this to deform to the point that it can't carry load anymore. Here it can withstand load. When I do that, it's very, very easy to get it deformed. This structure, if it's a column and buckling, has failed, even though the wood never plastically deformed and it never broke. When I uh, release the load, it's straight again. Let's take this other stick now. This has a width and a height of about 10 millimeters. It's just a little bit smaller cross-sectional area. Whereas the area moment of inertia of this was, let's see, 144 millimeters to the fourth. This one has an eye of 833, much higher area moment of inertia. Since area moment of inertia is the uh, contribution to stiffness due to the cross-sectional shape, area moment of inertia says, all other things being unchanged, this should be a lot stiffer. Therefore, this should be a lot harder to buckle. Well, I'm going to try this here. And I've got to get, OK. Ready? Go. All right, I can't get that to buckle, and it's about ready to punch holes in my hands. So if I had to push that hard, this is pretty hard to buckle. So let's put some numbers to this. The Euler buckling equation is written this way. Okay, P critical, the critical load, the load required to cause a, a column to buckle is equal to pi squared times e times i, that's just a number, elastic modulus, area moment of inertia, divided by the length squared times k squared. So what's k? Well, k is something called an end fixity condition. Not the name I would give it, but that's what it's called. And it's essentially a way of allowing a single expression to be useful in more than one condition. Euler decided that rather than derive uh, separate buckling equations for different end conditions, it was more convenient to make an effective length so that all columns in buckling were compared to a pinned-pinned column. For pinned-pinned, that is the one we're going to use here, if your end condition is pinned on both ends, your beam is pinned on both ends, k equals 1. That's, that's the nominal condition. So this is pinned. This means that if I push and cause buckling, the ends have not translated. There's no motion this way, but there is rotation. The ends are allowed to rotate as if they've been pinned. So that's a pinned pin boundary condition. If I were to take a similar stick and clamp it so the ends could not translate and they couldn't rotate, they had to stay horizontal, it gets a lot harder to buckle. Right? Essentially, a clamped, clamped uh, column in compression acts like a pinned, pinned uh, uh, column in buckling that's shorter than it really is. For clamped, clamped boundary conditions, K is more than one, or is less than one. So that goes up. All right. It acts like a beam that's shorter than it really is. If uh, let's let's put some numbers to this for our two conditions here, and I'll show you what how we calculate this. And the idea here is to see the effect of area moment of inertia on the calculated buckling load. All right. 
This is going to be stick one, this wide, uh, thin one, this one that's shaped like a ruler. Stick number two is going to be the one that's square and cross-section. Like I said, they came from the same board. Um, I assumed E in English units to be 800,000 PSI. It doesn't really matter in this case since we're making a comparison, but that's, that's about right. And this is about 5.516 uh, gigapascals. We'll do everything in metric units here. Okay, length for both beams was just a tick under 22 inches, and so that works out to 557.3 millimeters. I'm probably a little optimistic in how many significant figures I'm using. So let's look at the things that are different. Stick one, the one that's shaped like a ruler. The base is 27 millimeters, and the height is four millimeters. Okay, area is 108 millimeters squared. I is 112 bh cubed, so it's 112 times 27 millimeters times 4 millimeters cubed. All right, if you work that out, you get 144 millimeters to the fourth. Stick number two is the small square one. Again, about the same cross-sectional area, or as close as I could get with my power sander downstairs in my lab. Okay, B equals H. They're both 10 millimeters now. And so I is 1 over 12. Now it's just 10 millimeters to the fourth is the, is the short way to write this. It's 10 millimeters times 10 millimeters to the third, so 10 millimeters to the fourth. And that's 833.3 millimeters to the fourth. Right. Much, much higher area moment of inertia, therefore higher buckling load. That number there has changed, but these other ones haven't. Pi is unchanged, E is unchanged, K is 1, and L is unchanged. So all the change in our buckling is due to the change in I. The critical buckling load for this is calculated to be 25.24 uh, newtons, and over here, the buckling load is calculated to be 146.1 newtons, okay? Or in English units, this turns out to be about 5.7, and this turns out to be 32.8. So, that makes sense. It's not very hard to make 25 newtons with just my fingertips. I can't make 146 newtons even doing this. I, my muscles might be strong enough, but my skin isn't. I'm going to experience uh, uh, the, the bearing stress on my hand is going to be too high, which is the high-tech way of saying I'm going to punch two holes in my hands. And I'm not willing to do that, at least not for this. So here you go. Uh, much, much higher buckling load, same cross-sectional area, same weight. The difference is due to the differences in I caused by the differences in cross-sectional area, the cross-sectional shape.